Hey guys, how's it going? So we're back with another video. Today, I guess it's almost a, a retrospective on this Kramer Beretta special, in a way. This was supposed to be about the bridge, but I think it's going to also serve as a retrospective. So, long story short, when I use the tremolo, it doesn't ever really go back to pitch. Um, let me explain it. So, if I use the tremolo, it is in tune. If I bend a string, it's out of tune. If I use the tremolo again, it goes back in tune. This is a known issue and a common one with guitars like this. In fact, uh, Ed Van Halen's original uh, Frankenstrat guitar, or his Frankenstein guitar, the black and white one, before he put the Floyd Rose on it, had that problem. Instead of using the trim to put it back in tune, he would, he would tune it, bend all the strings, tune it. He'd use the tremolo, it would go out of tune. So in between picks or in between songs or riffs, he would grab the string with his finger and pull it slightly to pull it back in tune. So this is a known issue with this style of trim. Um, we're actually going to replace these saddles with roller saddles today. That's the only fault I can find with this guitar. Otherwise, it is an amazing guitar and probably the value king. But another thing that I wanted to talk about, other than the tuning issue, how did it hold up after about a year of use? Well, I'm going to try really hard to show you this. But do you see in the saddle there, you can actually see the imprint of the strings. Let me see if I can focus it. So, do you see right there and right there, the wound strings? You can actually see that they've dug their way into the saddles. And that's to be expected with a cheaper guitar, right? You can see it there with the D string as well. Obviously, you're not going to see imprints on these unwound strings, but I can tell you that because there's imprints here, I bet you those higher strings have worn grooves into the saddles. Why is that a problem? Well, it's not going to really stay in tune very well if you slightly, like let's say you bend the string or fret the string. Well, the string's going to get going to pull as you bend the string. And when it pulls, it tries to return to zero. Or let's say you use the tremolo. You bend the tremolo down. The string moves. And then when you put it back, the string pulls back and tries to return to zero. Well, if you've got these little notches in here, it could catch on those. And the tiniest little bit of friction can cause your guitar not to go back in tune. So... That's the other reason we're gonna replace the saddles. I don't really need to do that. The guitar works great as it is. That is a part of playing this guitar that I play it different from others. I use the trem more on this guitar because of how important it is to use it to keep it in tune. There are songs that we play live that don't have tremolos in them. I've added tremolo parts to them so that I can put the strings back in tune. So we're gonna replace these saddles with some roller saddles. I'm gonna show you how to do that. So this is our SSX Stinger, if you remember. We put these Invader single coils in, the, in this guitar, which was kind of disappointing. Um, so as I do frequently, a gigging guitar, I'm going to take the best parts out of my other guitars and throw them in my gigging guitars. This is not a gigging guitar. Not until it gets some better pickups. So you can see this has roller saddles. The way this works is when you use the tremolo, the string act or bend the string or whatever, the string actually rolls across this little wheel. Um, I could take the whole bridge off and install it in the Kramer, but I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to take the saddles off. So what I do, um, if I'm going to swap saddles on a guitar or anything, take them off of this one, put them on the other one, whatever, I take a picture of this so that I know where to set these for the intonation. Now, I can always um, just intonate it like a normal person, but I always take a photo uh, just as a starting point. So I take a photo, I try to match it the best I can, and then uh, intonate it from there. So as you can see, this will be interchangeable with the Kramer. As you can see, there's just a little screw with a spring that you screw into the saddle. You can see those saddles, it's the same mechanism. So I'm gonna take a picture of both sets of saddles right now so that I have it for my reference. Now that I've taken the photos, the first thing I need to do is get the strings off. So yes, this means I have to restring two guitars today, but that's okay. Quick tip, don't leave your guitar without strings on it, um, because that's not good. You want to have the tension on your neck from your strings so that it's ready to play. If you leave strings off of it for too long, uh, there's a potential that that neck kind of bends the other direction, so that when you do put strings on it, there's a breaking in period in which you have to continuously play the guitar and leave it strung up so that it can kind of reach its tension again. So... You know, half of that's a myth. Some people say, if you don't do that, you're going to break your guitar. No, you're not going to break your guitar. But it is best 
to leave your guitar strung up at tension most of the time. Uh, if you break a string, don't let your guitar sit with a broken string for too long. You want to put a new string on it and keep that tension on your neck so that it's ready to play when you want to pick it up and play it. So let's get these strings off so that we can take off these saddles. All right, so we've got the uh, strings off. So you're just going to take your screwdriver and you're just going to unscrew it. Pretty easy. I should probably be using a skinnier screwdriver so that I don't scratch the finish of this guitar. But uh, this guitar has been to hell and back. So I don't really care all that much. Maybe I should. <laughs> there, the saddle is off. So here's a saddle. Basically, you've got your little adjustment screws to adjust the height, and then you've got your little wheel which does spin freely. That's something to check when you're using a roller saddle, make sure that it spins freely. And then you've got your little hole where your screw goes. I'm hoping that the Kramer is using the same uh, screw size for the bridge, because if it does, then I don't have to take these screws that I'm unscrewing right now out of this bridge. I can leave it on here and then just put the Kramer saddles on this guitar using the screws that are there already. So, I'm going to go ahead and finish the other four of these, which is literally just turning a screwdriver. I don't need to make you sit through that whole ordeal. So I'm going to go ahead and stop the camera now, and I'll come back when they're all out. All right, I got them all out. And uh, yeah, there's nothing else to do here um, on this guitar. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take this guitar off the bench. I'm going to grab the other one and show you what's next. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to try to get the heights to match. What do I mean by that? Well, um, as you can see, I've got the height set on these to where the action is good and where I like it. So I'm going to try my best to take each of these saddles and try to match the height so that it's the same as the one I'm replacing. So as you can see, this one is pretty much, I mean, it's a little low. So if I match this back corner here, it's a little low. So I'm gonna take an Allen wrench and to raise it, you're gonna tighten it. So I'm gonna raise it a little bit, see if I can get it to match. So right now I'm doing it without holding it there. And as you can see, that's right about perfect. So now I can take this one off and replace it with this one trying to make sure to put it back in the same relative spot. Okay, I got it out. Another thing I wanted to mention, that's kind of obvious, I guess, is once you get it out, you can match it just by eyeballing it, right? So you can hold them side by side while they're removed and try to get the adjustment screws to match in height. And uh, by eyeballing it, I got pretty close. So now is the moment of truth. We're gonna see if these screws will fit in these saddles. If they won't, I'm going to have to get the other guitar back out, and I'm going to have to take the screws off, too. So you just kind of try to get it started and hope that it catches, and it does. That's great news. So that means I don't have to get that other screws out of the other guitar. This one's going in just fine. So um, by eyeballing it before, I saw that the end of the saddle was about halfway from this uh, adjustment screw hole. So I'm going to adjust that so that it is about in that same spot. There we go. That's about halfway to that screw hole. So there's one down. Hopefully this is worth it because this is a lot of work for this. Um, all right, let's go ahead and do the others the same way. I'm just gonna recap. So first, I'm gonna look and see where is this one relative to the one next to it. If I look here, this one comes about a little under half close to this screw here, the edge of the saddle does anyway. So again, that's for initial positioning. We'll probably have to intonate the guitar, um, but for initial positioning, that's a good place to start. It'll make it a lot easier to intonate if we start in a spot that was already pretty much intonated. And then once I get this out, I'm going to match the height of the new saddle to the height of the old saddle. 
So let's go ahead and get the next one out and I'll show you what I mean. This is a pretty clear example of what I'm talking about. So as you can see, this one right here is uh, quite a bit longer than this one right here coming out the bottom, which means that this is taller than this one is currently set. So I'm gonna use my Allen wrench until these match. So then I'll know that the height is set properly. So I'm gonna do that now. Hopefully you can see that they do now match. So since they match, I can go ahead now and screw it in. There we go. All right, so I'm gonna repeat this exercise for all of the others and I will come back when they're all done. Okay, so there we go. We've got the uh, saddles all installed. Give it a quick test. Each of the wheels spin freely. They're not gunked up or gummed up. I mean, it doesn't look amazing, but who really cares how it looks, right? This is about function. So uh, let's uh, string it up now and uh, see how it does. We're gonna see first if the action good, and then we'll see if the trim works any better, and we'll see if it goes out of tune when I use the trim. If it does, then we know the problem is likely the nut. When we string it up, I am gonna use this uh, stuff. It's called Tune It. This is some lubricant that you can put on your saddles, which I'm not gonna do because I've got roller saddles now, but I am gonna put it on my nut. And when I put it on my nut, that should help uh, the string slide through it a little bit better. Some people say that it's snake oil, but I always use it and I don't generally have tuning problems with my guitars. So I don't know, I recommend it. I'm gonna put a link in the description if you wanna buy some. All right, so I've got it all strung up. I've got the new saddles on it. Uh, the height is pretty good as it is. I'm just gonna leave it where it is. So let's try out this trim now and see how it is with these rolling saddle deals. <laughs> Well, I'll tell you one thing, it's a lot easier to use the trim now, and uh, that's cool. Is it still in tune, though? It is. So what was our problem? Our problem before was, we would, I would use, for this guitar, for example, I would use the trim, I would tune it up, and then if I would bend a string, it'd go out of tune. If I use the trim again, it would go back in tune. So let's see, if we do some bending, are we gonna have that problem here? Let's see, are we still in tune? No, we're not. The G string is out. But if we use the trim, let's see. Back in tune. So what the heck's going on here? Well, the simple way to explain it is that the tension is not even. The tension of bending a string and the tension of using the trim is not the same. And we've got something going on with our nut that's causing the string to get stuck in there, basically. So what's the answer? New nut. Did the roller saddles fix it? No, it didn't. It did make the trim easier to use and it did solve one half of the problem though. It could be that it's both the nut and the saddle that was causing the problem and we've taken care of one of them. So how do you deal with this problem? Let's say that you don't really have the ability to change the nut right now and you need to take this show to a gig in 15 minutes. Well, what are you gonna do? Well, there's two different ways to do this. You could do like I do, which is use the trim and then tune the guitar. Every time you bend a string though, you're gonna go out of tune. So you gotta just find a place to use the trim somewhere while you're playing. So here's an example of that. That little that I did, that put the guitar back in tune. Before I did that, the guitar was out of tune. Example. Guitar's out of tune now. So I have to find a time to use the trim now that the guitar is out of tune. So let's say that I'm, the, the lead part is over and now I'm on rhythm. Now I'm back in tune. So you just gotta use it somewhere. Somewhere in between chords or during a chord if you're going from lead to rhythm and, and you've got this problem, that's one way you can do it. The other way you can do it, which is the way that Van Halen did it, was he would pull all his strings and then tune and stretch all his strings out and then tune. So when he would use the trim, the old style trim like this, 
then the guitar would go out of tune, but then you've just got to pull the string sometime, stretch the string sometime to put it back in tune. So I'll give you an example. Let's say we have the opposite problem. It goes out of tune when you use the trim because you tuned it after stretching the strings. We're going to use the exact same example that we just did. So now the guitar is out of tune. So what do you do? You just got to pull the string sometime. You see what I did there? That's all it takes. And you might notice guitarists doing this um, in old film, an old tape. Even today, you might see a guitarist doing that. They'll be playing and then they'll be like pulling on their string. What are they doing? They're putting their guitar back in tune because they've got this problem. What is the solution to the problem? Again, you're probably going to need a new nut, one that's cut properly, one that's made of something better than plastic, something like bone um, or uh, tusk, graph tech, something like that. Um, that'll solve your problem pretty much every time and then you'll be in good shape. So there you go. Do I recommend that you do these saddles even though it didn't solve my problem? Sure, why not? It could solve half of your problem. Um, and also it makes the trim feel easier to use. And uh, I don't know, I like the way it looks. Aesthetics do matter. I like the way it looks. Um, and on something like this, you know, it's, why not? It looks better than those other saddles did anyway. So it didn't work and it didn't solve my problem, but that's okay. You know, you can't always solve everything the first time. Sometimes you're gonna try the first thing to see if it works. And if it doesn't work, you move on to the next thing. I was pretty frustrated, I'm not gonna lie, uh, that it didn't work. And then I started thinking about it and how much is a new nut? Like $8? <laughs> so I actually ordered a nut since I filmed that last segment that you just saw and it'll be here tomorrow. So next time, we're going to install that new nut and we're gonna compare it to the old nut and see if that finally resolves this problem. If that doesn't resolve the problem, it has to be the tuners. And if we have to replace the tuners, we'll replace the tuners. And if that doesn't fix it either, then the guitar is just cursed. But it's gotta be one of those things, right? So anyway, thank you very much for watching. I very much appreciate it. I'm sorry that we didn't get to the end uh, of, of, of this and fix the problem, but hopefully we fix it next time when we install the new nut. So. Thanks again. Appreciate you very much for watching. Please like and subscribe and join the Discord in the link in the description below if you want to talk about guitar, gear, etc. Thanks again. See you next time and keep on rocking.